Welcome to Sabbath School Daily, where we have been studying from this lesson, Psalms. This week we're studying from lesson 12, which has a title, Worship That Never Ends. And today is Sunday's lesson, which has a title, Lift Up Your Hands in the Sanctuary. It kind of revolves around Psalm 134. So ideally you'll read Psalm 134 so that you know what the context is for uh, today's lesson. And the lesson starts by saying, Psalm 134 recalls the Aaronic priestly blessings in number 6, 24 through 26, and highlights blessing as the underlying principle and outcome of the relationship between God and Israel. The people bless God in the sanctuary, and God blesses his people from Zion. The blessings extend to all of life because the Lord is the creator of heaven and earth. The mention of Zion as the place of divine special blessings underlines the Lord's covenantal bond with his people. It is thus within the covenant of grace that Israel exercises the privilege to bless the Lord and is blessed by him. I remember when I used to read these texts when I was a child, texts such as uh, this one here in Psalms, where the people are blessing the name of the Lord. And I remember thinking, well, how can people bless God? It's the other way around. It's God who blesses the people. But this is the context of what it means to bless the name of the Lord. We don't bless him in the sense that we will be granting him blessings, but we bless him in the terms of praise, of glory, of honor. We honor him when we bless him. And so that's what this is talking about right here. When we bless the name of the Lord, again, we how can we bless God? But we praise, we extol mighty worship to him, and that's what it's talking about. There are several psalms, several verses that are mentioned in today's lesson, such as Psalm 18, verse 1, Psalm 36, Psalm 113, Psalm 134, and Psalm 135. And the question that comes from the lesson after reading these texts is, how are the worshipers depicted here? So how do you find worship in the context of these psalms applied to the people that are actually doing the worshiping? How are they worshiping God? In what sense are they worshiping God? What does it mean to praise and worship him? I believe that there is often a confusion between what it means to praise God and what it means to thank him. When you're praising God, you're praising him for what he is, for his attributes. So his loving kindness, his mercy, his compassion, his protection, his providence. And when you're thanking him, you're basically thanking him for the results of his attributes. So because God is love, he has loved me in these ways. Because God is a protector, he has protected me in these ways. And so remember that when you're you're praising God, you're recognizing him for who he is and what he is, and when you're thanking him, you're thanking him for what he's done in your life. The lesson then continues by saying, the Psalms often depict the worshipers as the servants of the Lord, who by night stand in the house of the Lord, and you'll find that in Psalm 134 verse 1, likely refers to the night guard of the Levites, or to the praise that was offered to God by the Levites both day and night. Because the Israelites worshiped the invisible God, who could not be represented in the form of any image, the sanctuary served to reflect the glory of the Lord and provide a secure environment for sinful people to approach their holy king. This encounter is initiated by the Lord himself and is regulated by his statutes and decrees. So before we reach out to God to contact him, to relate to him, he's already reaching out to us. That's what this last part said. And the sanctuary had everything to do with that. It was the place where people could go, where the sinners could go, where the worshipers could go in order to meet their God. Again, we can meet God anywhere, but this was a visual representative of so many things that represented God that it helped them understand this God that they're worshiping, that they're asking forgiveness to, that they are trying to model, they're trying to uh, follow his example. So that's what's involved here. Finally, coming to him as a living stone rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious, you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. That's in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. What we see here in the words of Peter is a New Testament expression of the same ideas presented in these Psalms, that of God's people, now a holy priesthood, offering praise and thanksgiving to their Lord Jesus Christ, their creator and redeemer, for all the good things that he had done for them. And so the lesson here is that this topic, it doesn't only come from the book of Psalms. It doesn't come only from the Old Testament. This is seen throughout the whole of scripture, in the Old Testament and in the New. And that goes to prove that you cannot have the New Testament without the Old or vice versa. 
Both are equally important. Both reveal the person of God, the character of God, especially when it comes to how we should worship and praise him. The lessons that are learned in the Old Testament, the teachings of God in the Old Testament, they apply also in the New Testament because God does not change. I hope that today's lesson was interesting to you. Study it. There's a lot more involved. Remember to study the lesson. That's really going to be the primary thing that you should be doing. Look up the Bible verses, answer the questions. That will be a blessing to you. And please remember to comment down below if you have any questions, if you have any doubts. I do love interacting with you. And please remember to like, to share, and to subscribe to our videos. We release one every day. And I hope to see you again here tomorrow for another Sab School Daily.